Hi, friends. Host Eric here, where he always is. I've got one important message to share more than any other message. That message is cognitive functions, schmognitive functions. I don't know if you've heard about these so-called cognitive function things, but uh, my message to you tonight is cognitive functions, schmognitive functions. So, you know, bring it. Go ahead, bring it if you want. I don't really have a whole lot to say to you, particularly. I'm waiting for people to promise me to say things. Um, I figured some people would probably want to talk about cognitive functions, whereas other people would prefer to talk about schmognitive functions. <laughs> Thanks, I can fall. <laughs> interesting day, I guess. Um, oh, bucket of schmognitive functions? Woo, you think you can take down a whole bucket of bar of schmognitive functions? Who's getting the wrench up their ass tonight? <laughs> right, Daddy, always kind of here swinging that big dick, huh? Um, so yeah, I had an interesting day today. I napped for about like three hours in the afternoon, which was surprising because I thought I was pretty rested this morning. But uh, now that I'm now that I'm awake, <laughs> well, that's fine, my daddy. Just stop swinging it at me, please. I keep getting slapped by your schlong. Don't slap me with your schlong. In your schmugsy function bong. Well, maybe that's a notification that I'm live streaming. Could be. They do sometimes notify me, in case I wasn't aware. Um. <laughs> Oh, yes, right. Then what happened? You mentioned interesting. Well, I woke up and I felt, uh, I guess, a lot more lively than I did earlier. Um, as though I just needed one last dose of sleep before I could be wakeful. Um, and... What, else? what what was interesting? Well, one of the interesting things is talking with Rachel about her dress for the wedding, which is so much more complicated than you would think, right? So let me share with you the big problem here. And this is, I mean, we're talking about a major problem. And it turns out, Rachel found out, the bridal party is going with black. Now, she had already gotten a black dress, with an off-white purse and off-white shoes for the wedding. But what are we going to do now that we've discovered that the bridal party is wearing black? She doesn't want to look like a bridesmaid, obviously. So, after much discussion, the, uh... Oh, yeah, that's true, Legend Soul. Um... No, she's not supposed to wear black. She doesn't want to look like a bridesmaid. She chose the dress before she learned what color the bridal party was wearing, which is black. So she doesn't want to look like a bridesmaid, right? So after much discussion, we determined that what we should do is take a picture of her wearing her black dress with her off-white purse with gold accents and her similarly colored off-white shoes with gold accents. And shoot that picture to her Aunt Leslie and ask Aunt Leslie, will I look like a bridesmaid if I wear this outfit? So we did that, but Aunt Leslie hasn't responded yet. 
it was there was quite a bit of back and forth about what we should do about this. As Rich said, I, I gave it my full attention. Rachel wanted me to discuss it with her. Um, it's not the sort of thing that I normally... Uh... Oh, she still has that blue dress. That's just... Well, I know it... She has a blue dress. I think she returned... Um... I think she returned one of the blue dresses. She, I don't know. She's returned several things. She has several things. It, this is a process with Vincent's mom. Okay? This is a process. Don't, you can't rush this process. This is a process that involves a lot of thinking, a lot of fretting unnecessarily. She, she referred to herself earlier. And she's like, oh, thank you. Now I don't feel nearly as much in the weeds on this. I said, Rachel, it's May. You have plenty of time to get a new dress before August. You are not in the weeds in any sense of the word. But she frets about this stuff unnecessarily, you know. Um... Friends about it quite a bit. <laughs> I think it's just sort of in the absence of something else to fret for. But of course, we also have a really it's an interesting um it's an interesting wedding as well, because of course it's kind of important to remember Rachel's history and and our history with Rachel's family. Which is uh at first, Rachel's family and I were in stark conflict with each other um, because of two reasons. One, I didn't really get what it was like when Rachel had a psychotic episode. And two, because they were wrong and I was right. So, and she was right. I mean, what do you mean I was right? She was right. She was telling them things and they weren't listening to her, right? She was being um, compelled to go to this mental health like day camp thing for cannabis addiction. It was insane. Of course, cannabis addiction had nothing to do with her bipolar uh, mania. And obviously, bipolar mania is something that gets medicated properly, and then you don't have to do any sort of go to meetings thing, right? You know? Yeah, it was a rough start. But remember, it was a rough decade for Rachel, who was being consistently railroaded into this shitty mental health facilities uh, ongoing patient programs just to squeeze as much money as they could out of the state, probably, or whatever her insurance is. And, um, and, treating her for cannabis addiction that she never consented for treatment for. And it was an absolute nightmare, right? And what was the problem? Well, they weren't listening to her about her drugs, which drugs she should be on, whether they weren't working, stuff like that. You know, they kept treating her the same fucking things that weren't working for years. And everything, nothing was being actually successfully treated. It was always being managed. And then I came along and we had a lot of butting heads, right? And then... We got, yes, yeah, well, she, she was, when I met Rachel, uh, her parents, she was living in her parents' house, but her parents, during that time when I first met her, actually, were punishing her by making her stay outside all day uh, because she had smoked weed in the house, in her room. So the thing is, um, I was appalled right from the outset, this sort of nonsense, but um <laughs> the thing is, the key element was the marijuana. So the mother insisted time and again that, you know, marijuana was the real problem here and ran this bullshit, this line of bullshit on Rachel for, a, you know, a solid decade as Rachel objected and said, no, that's not what it is. And it was not listened to, you know. So we go to this. Keep in mind, since this went on for a long day, I mean, this was this was not a long term situation, Winston's mom, but um, it was, you know, it, it just happened to be when I, when I, uh,
when I met her. Anyway, um, the thing is, I think I think they realized quickly enough they'd gone too far with that shit. It it stopped. I mean, it didn't it didn't resume at any point. Um, and uh, but you know, there was a lot of of cowardice involved too, in the sense that Rachel's brother refused to talk to me when he kicked her out of the house to help facilitate the plan so that I could phase her back into my life here. Um, you know, forcing everything to go without any communication between him and me, without being held accountable for anything. He didn't want to be held accountable for anything. He didn't want to be held accountable for being a good person or anything. So when she comes back here and uh, I hire, we hire a private psychiatrist and he fixes her completely so that she's totally cured now instead of just managing an ongoing problem. Um, I mean, wow, that's that's really gratifying, right? And as we go into this wedding now, we're, we'll be together nearly two years by the time we go to this wedding. Obviously, the relationship is working out. Obviously, I was right about everything all along. And, um, you know, you know stories about Rachel and this family that's fairly, fairly talk, talk to each other fairly much, it seems like. Um, especially at the, the level of Rachel's parents, where there's like multiple aunts and uncles and stuff, you know. And I'm sure they all talk to their kids. So, you know, there, there, there have been narratives going around about Rachel and this family for a long time. So this represents a watershed moment in a lot of ways for her. as we return there, triumphant conquerors, you know, because there's going to be a moment where we're sitting at, at some table with family or whatever. And I'm going to just say, well, time for me to go smoke a bowl. Would you like to join me, Rachel? Now, Rachel's mom's story in among the family used to be that Rachel had an allergy to marijuana. It made her go crazy. Well, that lie has been shoved directly up everybody's ass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make no bones about that fact as I go about my business. I'm going to be very pleasant, likable, and, you know, be I'm going to be me as well. And people who don't like it can fuck themselves, you know, as always. And they, in this circumstance, they can really go fuck themselves because nobody can really say a goddamn thing. After standing by standing by and watching this shit for 10 years and believing the various lies and nonsense that were being spewed by varying family members, <sighs> there's not one shred of ground left to stand on. Not one shred. They're completely all that bullshit is completely blown out of the water now. So, you know, going back to this, going to this family gathering for her then is a very big, significant moment. It took me a while to realize how significant it was because I sort of had stopped thinking about that that line of stuff anymore. You know, uh, it ceased to be relevant to me really because I mean, it's, some, it's something great to have as a story that, that links to the beginning of your relationship in general. It makes me feel good, it makes me feel great, and and all that stuff. And uh, right. I will make a good impression. Rachel will be proud of me. I and uh, it's her time to shine, and she can show everyone how healthy and happy she is. Exactly. And the thing is, also, you know, if anybody slips into some old habits of condescending bullshit, well, they can be sure it's going to be fed right back to them anally. Because fuck no. Right? As they say in France. Is that right? Did I pronounce that correctly? Pardon my French. But fuck no. So, you know, it's like, I'm sure these, I've, I've had Zoom conferences with these people already multiple times. I, various family members. I've sat through several of them and, you know, they're, they're very, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a it's a it's a loud family. They're all ah, bah, 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 funny stuff. 
Hi, Rachel. Hi. I was just talking about. Uh, I was just talking about the wedding, Rachel. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about it? Well, just how it's it's a significant moment for us and you, especially, obviously, but um, because of all the stuff that happened before, right? Yeah. So it's significant because, mostly for Rachel, because of all that happened before I even knew she existed, right? Yeah. Um, but also for me, because of all that's happened previously in the relationship related to her family that was, there's a lot of conflict initially, and, uh, but, you know, the bottom line is, despite their fucked up in this, they do seem basically to love her, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and, in other words, there's, there's not this sort of malicious attempt to continue pathologizing her in the status quo, and there certainly is an attempt to be, like, generous. We, her mom would give us very generous gifts of or Christmas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that Very was generous. really nice. Uh, unnecessary, uh, but nice. And we appreciate it. And, you know, um, her dad as well. Good. Very generous gifts. I think her dad feels probably uh, somewhat guilty. Um, yeah. That is the word. And it's obvious how much her dad adores her. And yet he was allowed himself to get railroaded through into this stuff as a means of trying to compromise, right? Rather than trying to put feet up people's asses when they need to be put up people's asses. Right. Of course, that was her mom's specialty. That was her mom's specialty. And I know how much of a, of a hand for mom can be because I've gone head to head against her mom. Um, yeah. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I think what both their parents could see was that even even her mom could see that I was doing a much better job of loving her than they were. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of kicked them in the gut. I agree. So, uh... You know what? Um, my parents flew down one night. <laughs> it's a peacock. Well, anyway, Go ahead, um, I'm sorry. It's not a cat. I, it's a peacock. I got the okay on the dress. Oh, you got the okay. Oh, yeah. yeah she was fine. What'd she say? Yeah, she said I look stunning and not to worry about it, and she can't wait to see me because it's been such a long. That time. That doesn't answer your question, though. Yes, I don't look like a bridesmaid. So she said that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because she, she just says, "Don't worry about it." That's not a good answer because then you don't know whether you do or not, right? She explicitly said you do not look like one. No, she didn't. She just said don't worry about it? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because see, that's on. the thing. Don't let don't let her smear you without being without being precise. She may be concluding, yes, you do look like a bridesmaid, but don't worry Shit. about it. Right? She didn't explicitly say Okay, so you need to say it. So are you saying I do look like a bridesmaid, but don't worry about it? Or don't worry about it because I don't look like a bridesmaid. Okay. I will, but can I just text it now? And yeah. Send it to her like tomorrow because it's sure. I Obviously, do whatever you want. Um. Uh, yeah, Tyler Jordan. Everybody asks that. Is that a cat? No, it's peacocks. It, around this time of day, the male peacocks all announce to each other what tree they're sleeping in tonight. So it's like. They all have territories once they're a certain age. Uh, when they're not, when they're still teenagers, they kind of run around randomly, it seems like. But um, once they're a certain full grown male peacock age, they each have their own territory. It's about the size of half of a of block here in the residential area, which isn't very long. So it's like not a huge territory, but they seem to kind of have exclusive control over it, like the other male peacocks. Adult male peacocks don't come around. I've seen, you know, sometimes the adult males will shoo away the the juvenile males. I've um, seen ravens work with peacocks in the mating process. <laughs> you mean like stand around while they were mating? Yeah, like kind of like be director. 
like, come on, go, mm -hmm. go let him help you. Mm -hmm. Really, I wonder. Yeah. They might. They were communic. There's definitely communication going on there. I don't know. They're being wingmen to every literal wingman. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's the peacock version of "Good Night, John Boy." Good night, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, I that show is a little bit before my time in the sense that I don't really remember ever seeing it. I just remember hearing it referenced. But uh, I am familiar with the reference. This grape jelly is really impressing me, gotta say. I like it too. I like everything we got. Mm-hmm. Me three. You know, the uh, the free gram, the jet fuel is probably the least the least stand outy, which it's fine because it's just the free gram we got. Yeah. You know, for our full stamp card. Your dad just watched that show? Oh, that, that show, Good Night, John Boy, The Waltons? <laughs> I mean, it, what, what year was it? Like 75 or something? 76? I was probably like five or six years old. Well, yeah, this is better weed. We we got less weed this time than we got last time for more money, but um, it's it's fine because the weed's a lot better. So we end up getting twenty one grams for a hundred and eighty bucks. Last time we got twenty eight grams for a hundred and sixty five bucks. But this weed's a lot better, so we've got a better deal this time, really. I think. Yeah, I do too. <coughs> well, like Rachel was saying earlier, um, it's like there's two kind of make you cough. Is back of your throat make you cough, and there's like lung expand don't make you cough. You get good weed. It tends to make you cough after you've blown it all out. For me, anyway. Like, mm -hmm. okay, now I got something yep. clear in my Dude. chest. <coughs> <coughs> With shitty weed, it hits you in the back of the throat, scratchy, and yeah. makes you cough. Sometimes. Like you cough while you're pulling the bong rip, and then that's really uncomfortable. If you cough involuntarily, like you go, ah! <clears throat> and it comes out your nose, it's very peppery, it's very unpleasant. So, but good weed, you still will have some coughing to do. The other thing is, you can, you can usually taste in your cough for a little while after the weed you've just been smoking. So, when we run out of weed, between, and we haven't gotten new weed yet, we have this crap. It's a mixture of Shake and Keith. And it's really, uh, it's really, it really tastes awful. <laughs> What's the difference between smoking it versus edibles? It's kind of a lot different. Um, Edibles. Do you want to split that? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have it well. Oh, it's not good though. Uh, speaking of edibles, we got this. This is supposed to be 250 milligrams. This is supposed to be 125 milligrams each. Is this really going to be 125 milligrams? Here. Um, okay. Queen's Gabbard thinks the typology of Illuminati is after him. What the hell? Who's the typology of Illuminati? Oh, Winston's mom, I want to tell you that I subscribe to. One of the ladies that you suggested I follow for tarot, um, I forget her name, 
Uh, she's blonde hair, bangs, uh, speaks with an accent. I got a reading from her. It's very nice. Uh, very good reading. Um, it was a nice vibe in the chat. Um, and I hope to see you there sometime. Like, I'd like to... That was we've got a couple... You know, we've got a number of stores we could go to. Um, the one that's close to us, very convenient, we go to once a day. Um, you know, it really depends on how it plays out. We happened to go in today, and they, they just restocked the local place. It's gray market, which means it's not pre-weighed. They weigh it out in front of you. Uh, that's not technically legal, but, and so all your white market stores are, um, yeah, up to you, yes. Oh, she's in Norway. <laughs> okay. Listen, listen here, Oliver er, and everybody. I can guarantee you that I have never talked to any of those people any one time about Queen's Gambit. You know? <laughs> Rebecca Bitsum, that is such an old video. And I gotta tell you, um, my ex-wife was actually an ESFJ. That, that is such an old video. It's like one of my very, very early cognitive function videos. And if it's about us? No, it wasn't. It was about me and Candace. Um. It was so old that it's when I thought Candace was an ENFJ. It was like literally one of my first, yeah, like first year cognitive function videos. Um, I've learned a lot since then. And I still totally validate your relationship. Yeah. Okay, so... I think ENFJ, ENTP is plausibly a very good relationship. When I started going out with Rachel, I thought she was an ENFJ. I since have come to realize that she's, you know, or early on, after, you know, a few weeks, I was like, okay, she's definitely not an extrovert, and she's not an ENFJ, and she's definitely got too much SI, and she's obviously an INFJ. So, um... But, you know, INFJs can come across as ENFJs when they're mm -hmm. on, right? When yeah. they're being FE. I have, um, yeah, oh my god, please, oh my god! I'm so happy to see oh you. Oh god, I am, though, this is bad as me. <laughs> I think that's my seven Enneagram, too. You know what, Oliver Linehan? At the same way for ENTP and INFJ... It's just that ENTP and INFJ each do their own SI work. Yeah. ENFJ, ENTP, ENFJ just won't do the SI work, but ENTP will still do the SI work. So you, the ENTP might be able to convince the ENFJ to go to bed, or maybe not. Right. ENTP cooks every meal. I cook every meal, pretty much. Not every meal. Rachel sometimes feeds me lunch. Thanks. Do a dance? Okay. Virtual walking forward, pointing at stuff. Turn and look around, wave. Pull out your guns. Now you walk it backward. A total of four steps. There, that's as much dance as I want to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, ENFJs are not obviously going to cook for themselves very much. Uh, I guess that's probably one of the reasons why um, ENFJ is a beneficiary and ENTP is a benefactor. Is because INFJs don't want to be want their SI meddled with. Um, so they're kind of prickly about it. 
I'm afraid that some, like, seriously, this is, like, a really ridiculous, like, worry, but I worry that um, someone with better SI is going to come along and, like, feed Eric this, like, beast and fall in love. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's true, because my, my SI is so, like, it's... First of all, how's anybody going to get an opportunity to do that? <laughs> like, what, what are we going to do? I don't know. Accidentally start inviting or <laughs> some ISFJ woman to our home to cook meals for her? Oh my god. I mean, oh. I wouldn't mind having a uh, what do you call them? What they call them? Brescia. I'll call them the Mexican version. Now, and I believe it. They're in Russia. When I went to visit my friend Re Will in Russia, they had a babushka. That's what they call her. Oh, babushka. And she come in, clean, cook for them like multiple meals. I say like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and have like Thursday, Friday, Saturday in the freezer or something, you know. What a nice job for an older lady. I'd like to have one of those things. I'd like to have a babushka too. I'm I'm pro babushka. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. We probably need a spice a week babushka. I think. Yeah. And whatever it is that we have to do. eat the meals prepared it can't involve anything more than putting it in the oven or the microwave because if it involves anything more than that there's a decent chance that we're just not even going to bother because it's too much hassle yep did he cook for you rebecca vitsum did you cook wild greens and locally sourced hog? <laughs> locally sourced forest hog? ENTPs do like to learn things like that. It's true. You must have a good ENTP. Good ENTPs like to learn. Bad ENTPs are bitter because they can't teach. Oh, I'm sorry I never answered your question before, Sheila. I was going to answer it, and I got distracted. Oh, no, I did answer it. <laughs> What's the difference between edibles and... I started to answer it, then I ate the edibles, and I never finished answering it. <laughs> That's what happened. Um, what's the difference? Mm. Edibles is like... A lot of times they don't really hit me. You want another beer? You want a St. Pauli girl? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, Winston's mom, are you still here? I got the shoes that I'm going to wear to the wedding today if you'd like to see them. I like them a lot. I can't wait to wear them. I can't really wear them beforehand, but that's okay. They will be worth the wait. Thanks. Oh, there's some. They've got gold on the sides. I don't know if this is a blue dress you were talking about or not. When I said well. No, but it's not. It's a different. The different blue dress. Yes. Okay. No. Oh, I still have the blue dress. Oh, you still have the. Blue yeah. Dress. So I think that's gonna be what I wear because I'm not looking like a bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just need her to clarify for you what she means. Yeah. Yeah, like. 
She doesn't have to be nice to me. The point is, it's such a non-TI frame of reference. She asks the question. I hear the bridesmaids. I hear the bridal party is wearing black. I, I'm worried I might look like a bridesmaid. And then, yeah. what, what do you think in this? And the woman answers by saying, basically, you don't worry about it, you look fantastic. Yeah, that was the answer. That is not answering the question, which is, does she look like a bridesmaid? Yeah, and I don't want to look like a bridesmaid. Does, I really, really, I've been, like, kind of fretting that I'll be looking like I, you know, am, like, part of the bridal party and... Who wants to be that person? Okay, but how frustrating is it, though, in general, when people answer different questions than the one you ask? Yeah. People, look, you know, Rachel and I spent time crafting that text. You know, we spent time discussing how to approach this. We decided to take a picture of her, of her in it and phrase the question exactly the, the way we wanted we make, to make sure she addressed the question at hand. You know, to say, yeah, I, to, to expressly express, you know, we are concerned about this. Yeah. Will I look like a bridesmaid? We've heard it's the same. That's the question. It's the same, um, the same color. You know, I, what I said to Rachel when we were discussing earlier is, well, if if they have black and a different accent color or a dramatically different style of dress, then it probably won't really matter. Right. And you're fine with the black. Yeah. But if they have... Uh, if they have, if they also have black and off white and gold accents, then even if they have the same, a different style of dress, it's not a good idea. Then you look like you're just trying to copy and failing. I right? don't want that. <laughs> so it's the exact response. I I, I think it was like, you know, don't worry, no. you look fabulous or something. Like I that. will, yeah. Like, well, <sighs> I will read it verbatim. <laughs> and I fell for it. I would not worry. Okay, so there's a picture of me. You guys can see that, right? And it says, hey, Aunt Leslie, I heard the bridal party is wearing black. I'm worried I will look like a bridesmaid in this. In this. I, and then she replied, I would not worry about that at all. You look stunning. I cannot wait to see you. It's been too long. <laughs> I would not worry about that all at all. Well, but but why would you not worry about it? Would you not worry about it because it doesn't matter to you that she looks like a, and to you in your mind it doesn't matter that she looks like a, a bridesmaid, or is, should you not worry about it because she actually won't look like a bridesmaid? She wants to know the actual thing. But see, I guess we could have asked a better question. We could have asked, "How much do I look like a bridesmaid?" <laughs> but even that, I think even we that, still would have gotten this we answer. Still would have you know? gotten the answer. Yeah, because there's just. A, they're just so happy that I'm coming to the wedding. You Wait, know? What did you say you thought your Aunt Leslie was? ENTJ? Yeah. Legends Fall said maybe TI ignoring. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> What's TI ignoring? <laughs> is that ENTJ? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think she is. I think she, she a good a call there, tennis. Legends Fall. She's still very active. Like she she never takes off from work either. She's one of those people. Um, she's actually the one who suggested that I take sociology. Isn't that funny? Um, she's, she took sociology. Yeah, we know she's fine with you wearing that dress. Yes. Right? Yes. We get that. Aunt we Leslie's get the, fine. Aunt Leslie is fine. <laughs> I don't want dress. Kelsey. Cause like. But that's not, the thing is, we don't want, we don't want to be reassured by Aunt Leslie, that Aunt Leslie is fine with it. Yes. We I want to know whether or not it actually makes her look like a bridesmaid. Right, because I don't want to look like one of the bridesmaids. So Winston's mom, I had, I still have the blue dress, and I think I'm going to end up wearing that. I was questioning it because it's a lot more fabric than I would like for a summer wedding, but I don't want to look like a bridesmaid. I really don't want to look like a bridesmaid. <laughs> we've got that. We've got that clear. Yeah. You, you know, listen. I want you to remember. We've got plenty of time to fix this. Yeah. That's not the yeah. bride. We're asking Aunt Leslie. Okay. No, it isn't the bride. 
respond to, to the bride wanted to make it easy for the bridesmaids so she made um the color of their dress be black which is really nice but um like i love black dresses like especially for an occasion um and then i found out that the color is black and i'm like oh crap the wedding's in august okay the wedding's august is it the wedding's <laughs> two days before before the meetup day yeah yeah yes yes so we've got plenty it's of time day before the meetup and as i mentioned earlier in the stream rachel earlier referred to herself as being in the weeds it's May 26th or something. Oh, my God. I know. I know I'm being ridiculous. Yes, the wording was. I, Rachel and I worked on it together ahead of time, yeah. talked it out mm -hmm. to try to prevent this from occurring. Yes. And so the, the wording was specifically, uh, I hear the bridal party's wearing black. I'm worried I'm going to look like a bridesmaid. Yes. Yeah, see, that, that's a picture of me. And then I said, Hey, Aunt Leslie, I heard the bridal party is wearing black. I'm worried I will look like a bridesmaid in this. Well, the thing is, the reason I, you know, we changed it to say that at the last minute, Evelyn, was because I was concerned if we simply uh, indicated that we wanted to know uh, that she was, that she was um, going to look like a bridesmaid or not, then the aunt might assume she wants to look like a bridesmaid. Now this is this is something I threw out there. I after she said it, I was like, wait. And then I said, you know what? I think that's an unlikely conclusion. I think it's very unlikely your aunt's gonna conclude that you want to look like your bridesmaid. I think I'm letting my any, but it was too late, she'd already sent it the way I worded it. Um, because originally we we're gonna just say something like, uh, I hear the I hear the bridal party's wearing black. Do I look like a bridesmaid in this? Yeah. And that's what we should have kept it. We should have kept it at that. But I added the additional problem that if we just asked that, she might go, she might think that she wants to look like a bridesmaid. And we don't want to convey that information. Either. This is FE. This is all FE, F right? It's all it's FE. All FE stuff. Yes. If you want to know what FE is, the, the whole conversation Rachel and I have been having about this wedding prior to this it's live stream FE. is all FE stuff. Mm hmm. That would have because, been better. Yeah. Okay, Evelyn, thank you for your beautiful hindsight. Thanks, Captain Hindsight. Appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, <laughs> you know. Thanks, Captain Hindsight, for rubbing in my wrongness. That's usually I, my job, so I appreciate and, the fact you're doing it. And this is like INFJ's planning, right? Like, I don't have, like, big goals for my future in five years, but I really, like, would like to know what I'm wearing August 21st. <laughs> I like to plan that stuff. It's so gaff, but like I really do, just so that it, it's out of my mind. No, I, I I suggested she sent a follow up text, but of course her FE says, "Well, now it's too late." Yeah. To text because like, they're on the East Coast, so she doesn't want to send it till tomorrow. The follow up text is, "Can you read the follow up yes. text I said?" So this is in the works. I don't look like a bridesmaid, though, right? Oh, that's okay. That's what you went with. Yeah. I was. I said. I. I suggested she write. Um, I'm not so upset about this. <laughs> it's just. It's just. Um, it's fun. It's just. Uh, I think it's funny that you know the question didn't yeah. get answered, right? So I wish I had just said <laughs> something like what Evelyn said, but um, in this case, what I was suggesting to Rachel is that she say, "But are you not? Should I not worry because?" It doesn't look like a bridesmaid's dress, or because it uh, looks like a bridesmaid's dress, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it means, actually. I mean, it, and it makes me not want to wear the dress, honestly. <laughs> it makes me want to to play the um, to play the video of the one-armed drummer, or at least put the link here for everyone to enjoy. Yes. Yes. Okay. And put the link for everyone to enjoy the famous one-armed drummer. This little skit that I can't publish because it's not my content. But you can enjoy in the privacy of your room. Yeah. Eric and I are the guy with the glasses. 
Yeah, I'm not going to wear it. I don't think I'm going to wear it. My gut's telling me not to wear it because... For I, I don't some, wanna... It has been... Did you say it's time to go shopping? It's not like Rachel's been spending shit tons of money or anything. No. But it has been a steady stream of packages and returns and new packages and returns. And, yeah, like I have uh, a belt that I have to return. But now that you can go into the stores more, but they still let yeah. you go to the dressing rooms, right? Well, like in some places they do and they some places they don't. And then like Nordstrom, which is a big, big store where you get like prom dresses and stuff, has like nothing on the shelf because everyone's buying online now. It's very odd. Um, but I I do have a backup. I do have a backup. The only thing that uh, I'm not hip with the backup is that it's a lot of fabric. I think for a too much fabric wedding, but I don't care at this point. I don't. Uh, Rachel, I just don't want to look like a bridesmaid. Rachel, I don't want you to go to this wedding and be unhappy. Because of either of two possible reasons. Either because you look like a bridesmaid <laughs> or because you have too much fabric. Okay? So we're just going to have to get you a dress that has the appropriate amount of fabric that you feel comfortable wearing. And, you know, and the thing is, once you are, yeah, and Evelyn, me too, man. Once you are, uh, once you are satisfied, with your dress, I am very hopeful that you will know it with your NIFE. This is, this is the dress. We're gonna play "Say Yes" to the dress. What we're gonna do, Rachel? And Aww, I've never played that. Well, you played it's it with me while, earlier today, while. actually. Yeah, we've been playing it for a while now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I go. Well, you already have the dress in the bag. Rachel, is this your dress? <laughs> And you go. Oh, <sighs> it's just a, it's that princess man. cut though. I really like that princess cut one and that beeline one. Well, you know what? And that side flip one. <laughs> yeah. And the beeline one. I try all those other shapes on. Oh my gosh! And guys. the rectangle one. You know what, sweetie? Take this is your day. Take your time. And then you know what we need to do is we need to get some super. Super bunty friends to like make it super difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, horse mumbler! That's so funny that you say that. <coughs> you could wear a sa sash or a shawl to be extra sure you don't look like a bridesmaid. My mom was all about shawls when I would go to Sweet Sixteens and proms. She always wanted me to wear a shawl, but. I was like never wearing it because I was always dancing. Or my boy, which would you recommend? You go more with the sash or the shawl? It, should I wear a sash? <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things that was like Miss America, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I think I, I, love like, part, I can wear a sash like one of those like marching band guys. Point frown skull. Point frown skull? What does that mean? I don't know. Sup don't Santa know Claus? Either. I'm not Santa Claus. I think several sashes and a cravat. Honestly, Legends Fall, I'm not the guy. There are times when I feel like that. There are times where I feel like, you know what? Fuck it. I really like this dress. It's like super airy. Then they just wear it. Okay, cool. I'm going to do it. You're going to wear the black dress now? Yeah, let's just do it. Okay, okay, well, okay. I mean, but Rachel, why don't we just continue to follow through and ask clarification? Why don't we because ask your mom? Why don't you ask your mom? My mom's gonna say yes. I know it. No, no, but you ask her if it looks like the bright face dresses. Okay. Ask that specific question. So, in the same picture, say, Does this look like the bright face dresses? Your mom's probably asleep now, too. It's almost midnight. That's a lot of emoticons. Yeah, I, I don't really want to wear a dress. I would like to wear a sash that says um, Rachel's life partner. <laughs> Not really. I, I'm going to play it cool. Don't I, you guys don't worry. I'm going to play it super cool. It's going to be like smooth as 
smooth as. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, forty-four. She's definitely asleep. Yeah, so it's in the morning. Okay. It's not. Remember, we're in May. It can wait till morning. You don't need to make this decision Thank right now. Thank you for being supportive. I feel really embarrassed having this as a thing. Hi, Ike. Welcome back. Ogia hey, man. Hey, Ike. Oh, it's a full moon tonight. How are you doing? Yes. Rachel's life partner. That's what they'll both say. The section. <laughs> you can wear one of those vests. No, I know. Because you both wear I'm a stupid church. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, my gosh. That would be fun stuff for a wedding, huh? I mean, but if what I'm freaking out over is a uh, wedding dress, like life's not too bad. That's how I look at it. So, All right. Well, like I said before, I think that we both have a tendency sometimes to generate things to worry about when there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Maybe everybody does. I, think I, I don't so. know. I don't know how much. I, you know, it's like. I guess. I guess we're the stereotype of the. This enlightened uh, guru, like uh, what's his name? The guy I always reference when I'm talking about this. The fire. No, that guy who does that ni stuff. Eckhart uh, Tolle. Yeah, Eckhart Tolle. Name one of them, Eckhart. Name the boy Eckhart. Doctor Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, wisdoms. Yeah, well, your goat will say your goat will speak more wisdom than than the actual Eckhart told when he says bad. Deepak Chopra, and then one of them Eckhart and one of them Deepak. There should be a symposium with Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, um, Elon Musk, and Oprah. Yeah. And, and maybe Tony Robbins too, because he's yeah. pretty popular yeah. right now, also. I've got a solution for you, okay? He <laughs> is silly like that. <coughs> Wait. <coughs> Where, what's the problem again? Your current state of being is the problem. <coughs> Here's the thing. Remember this. You're not okay until after you take my symposium. Oh, that's a good sale. I like that. I'm going to take that symposium. <laughs> <laughs> I guess people who don't feel okay, it's just exploiting them. It's just saying, like, well, I'm going to help you feel okay. Does it actually help them feel okay? Well, maybe. But is that a good end in and of itself? Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously, if people are having difficulties, um, Things are a lot tougher when shit's bad than things are when shit's easy. When shit's bad, then it's very stressful. The thing is, right now, stuff's pretty easy with uh, with uh, our current situations. That are pretty easy for for us to just be at peace, but. Neither of us are really at peace. We're both generally fretting about something to some extent. Uh, you know, uh, either fretting, fretting about something or doing something. Or uh, sometimes we're relaxed and enjoying something, but a lot of times uh, I'll feel like I should be doing something else, more productive, or, uh, or you know, I just, my mood's just kind of vastly randomly, too. I, uh, it's something I've, I've become increasingly aware of, the fact that um, moods look a lot to SI, and look a lot to timing to various SI benchmarks, and uh, and I just sometimes am in a bad mood for no reason when I'm in a bad mood. It's usually for not any reason. 
uh, if there is a reason, it's always basically I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I need to sleep, or something like that. If there's a solution, it's always the same thing. I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I need to sleep. So from my perspective, this idea that there'd be somebody who explained to you how you're living wrong right now and how you should live differently uh, in order to be at peace is... It's sort of putting the cart before the horse because you kind of got to know whether somebody's at peace or not not at peace. It, it depends a lot on why they're not at peace, right? So it's like Rachel and I are probably both good, good subjects for the message. You need to relax, you know, the only thing between you and peace is is the wrong attitude. Those kind of messages are actually fairly accurate for us, but they're not for most people because most people have actual problems. You know, we don't really have actual problems. Uh, I don't find smoking weed makes me moody. Uh, I do find amphetamines make me moody and sometimes give me a headache and I don't know, ESTP reading the power of now. What is this garbage? I need the power of not now. Yeah. ESXPs join cults led by either E. I don't think ESTPs do really all over my hand in general. I mean, maybe EJRND got a little culty. I mean, they're, they're subject to it, but not as prone to it nearly as ESFPs, I don't think. The first thing that comes out of my mouth is always right. Jenna Jameson. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. I'm trying to dissect that <laughs> as well. Is she saying the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth things coming out of her mouth are always wrong? Um... How can you differentiate? <coughs> How can you differentiate between low SI and low SE? Asks wandering spirit. What well, wandering spirit? Um, it's kind of tricky. Kind of, kind of actually tough, tough to distinguish. Uh, in general, when you when you're trying to distinguish between four and five or four and eight. Four and eight easier to distinguish between than four and five, but still not uh, not great. Um, so the thing is, it's like she's uh, I mean, I see her SESI in the following sense. She does laundry on Mondays. And what I mean by that is she does laundry on Mondays. If she doesn't do it on a Monday, which sometimes will happen if my dad's super active in the house because, you know, trying to do things around my dad in the house is guaranteeing you're going to get a lot of little TE lectures. Uh, are you sure you're holding that correctly? <laughs> you know. Well, I mean... Didn't I, I honestly just like the days passed and I forgot. So I was like, no, I settled on Monday. I'll do it next Monday. Right. So um, mm -hmm. the thing is, uh, I must be missing something. I just put it on live chat. Do you think being clutchy is linked to a function? Yeah, my dad. Whenever something like that happens, uh, oh, I see. Brandon Vestaloff didn't show up on um, 
top chat, but it only showed up on live chat. Do I think being extremely klutzy links a function? <coughs> well, not really. <coughs> like, because it's just what you mean by klutzy. So there's. <coughs> yeah, he's an ESTJ, my dad. There's. Um, There's different kinds of klutzy, right? So there's klutzy in the sense of sort of head lost in the clouds bumping into stuff. There's klutzy in the sense of like my daughter used to be kind of klutzy looking when she like ran or something. But it was because she when she was in middle school and stuff, it's because she grew too fast. Oh, I didn't finish the story with the laundry on Mondays. <laughs> okay, sorry. So the point is, there's zero chance of me doing stuff like that. That's an SE conscious, SI unconscious, okay? SI conscious, SE unconscious is how I do things, which is when I feel like it. So uh, I cleaned the bathroom, cleaned it really well, because I was on amphetamines and felt like it. You know, and but if you tell me I'm gonna do meow on every day of of, of the week, no. <laughs> the fact that she's se fourth is why, since she didn't do it on Monday, she put it off till the next Monday. That's sort of si ignoring, which is well, not si ignoring, but si unconscious, because it's like, um. Was it she? She turned it. She turned the S I into F E F E T I N I stuff. She she asked me. I think. Do you think if we have enough clothes to last till next week? Because yeah. I didn't get it done on Monday, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, what? <laughs> I don't. What are you talking about? I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think about that really. Yeah, he said he doesn't notice until it's like a real huge pile. I, I wouldn't notice that she's not doing her job until I didn't have any clothes. And then I'd still just think, well, maybe I should do some laundry. I don't really think she has. She She's taken on certain jobs onto herself. Yeah. but Because I've wanted to, though. That's how I am. I'm very much a doer. Like, to show that I am a teammate. Right. So, the thing is, one example of, of SISE and why SI is so much more in the moment than SE if, when, it's, when they're related like that is that it's almost always me who says, okay, I'm hungry. And she goes, yeah, I'm hungry too. Let's eat. And rather than her leading occasionally if you if it's been a if it's been a while she'll say uh we're gonna eat soon or, but you know and, and then after a long time she eventually started sort of just getting herself food when when i'm not around she just get herself food so there's a lot of time when we're separate from each other at night because she'll go to bed maybe two or three hours before she actually goes to sleep, I think a lot of mm -hmm. times she'll be sort of chilling in there, watching her laptop. And she's like a, a squirrel, <laughs> you know, like oh, get yeah. on the floor and she has these little piles of snacks around. Her, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> It does feel like quite a since you've seen Zen Black through through that. You only have ten percent of your retina done up for peripheral peripheral vision. Did somebody shoot you in the eye with a laser? Is that what happened? Do you enjoy doing barbecue or just cooking? Uh yeah, it depends on depends on a lot of things. Sometimes I find it SI satisfying to uh, barbecue. I don't really cook in the house on the stove because of the aforementioned difficulty in doing any tasks around my dad. 
I would probably, I mean, do you mind, like, I would be using the, the kitchen more, too, if, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's, the reality is, my dad doesn't really want us messing up his space. Right, know? like, how it is, is, like, this is our space. And the and, master bedroom's our space. And the master bedroom's our space. Um, but the rest of the inside is his, and we house it when he's wet. We're basically house sitters. So. Yeah. So it's like when he's away, sometimes I'll use the kitchen, or sometimes she will. Yeah. But he, he's not away for very long. It takes us a while to shift gears in terms of our. Uh, yes. In terms of our habits. That's another weak SE thing. Is It's like. <clears throat> It, uh, that light is almost toast. Yeah. Or keep Sometimes it's cigarettes. like, think my SC and she Cigarettes, I love your name. <laughs> and I'm, I like your icon because you have the icon of Bojack Horseman. I think that's pretty damn cool. Oh, is that Bojack? I yeah, thought it was a Bojack. rooster. Nope. Oh, hi, Carissa. Cigarettes is a great name. I like cigarettes, too, so. Or I guess you could say cigarettes, but I like you. Oh, cigarettes, oh, cigarettes, I like you so much. Um, the nice thing about ISTJs, though, is they probably just sort of offer to do it for you, whereas ESTJs just criticize you about it and then maybe take it out of your hands. Like, give it to me. <laughs> one of my, uh, one of my, jokes about ESCJs is that their motto is let me tell you how you're dealing with your property wrong. <laughs> uh, you sure you want to handle it like that? <laughs> what? My bike? Yeah. Like what? Well, I mean, you're not really keeping it very clean. Okay. You know, it's going to get gunked up like that. You're leaving like that. Guess he's right again, of course. Of course he's right, what are we saying? And then I gotta go. <sighs> okay, I won't do it like that. I won't do it like that. I wonder Just, what F5 people would say to me being F5. Thanks, for instance, Mom, for the ongoing sort of like. Um, like branding things or whatever you do, yeah, you I, call that. I appreciate that. That's, me too. For people who aren't who aren't particularly familiar with the live stream, I think that's probably helpful. Mm -hmm. My mother yes. will ask me to cook so she can get some rest, and then she stays just to monitor me and tell me how to do it. <laughs> 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 yeah, your mom must be any of DJ. Plugging. Thank you. Yeah. Plugging, that's the word in the black. You know, it's like uh, we were watching Hajime no Ippo, and in the first the first run of it, first 75 run up says they keep misspelling whale. They whale into them, W-H-A-L-E. And then early in the second run of episodes, they say whale into them again, and they spell it uh, w a i l like they should, and um, and then they don't really use that expression anymore. Even though they use it throughout the first run. So I think that the only reason they used it at the beginning was just to show, okay, we know we misspelled that before. <laughs> um, but I was impressed that they they translated um, catching a fish with your hands as noodling. Um, you know. It's, it's something that most people don't. It's not a very super commonly know known word that 
if, if you to noodle a fish is to catch it with your hands and throw it up onto the shore oh. and then grab it, you know. Learn something new every day. In Hajime no Ippo, they Takamura gets in trouble for noodling at the fishing hole. Ah. Yeah. Thanks for that cute. That's great to uh great to hear. That's why this video live stream is titled Cognitive Functions, Schmognitive Functions. You have sensory processing disorder? Are you really sure there's something wrong with UXI? Because it might be nothing wrong with you. You might just be an INTJ or something. You know? They tend to pathologize INTJs. Oh, you've got some sort of disorder. People try to pathologize me too. Oh, you've got an executive function disorder, Eric. But, you know? So I read this one thing. I Googled my name one time and I read this thing that somebody wrote about me. I think it was. I mean, INFP with a cog with a an executive function disorder. I just like these fucking people. <clears throat> you know the uh, the verbose pontification about it. You know, make it gives it some sort of sheen of legitimacy that it totally doesn't deserve. ENTP is an executive functioning disorder. I don't have one. I am one. It doesn't make it a disorder. It makes it a cognitive function stack. You know? I run at different rate of speed than people, than other people do. Which is to say, I run very energy consuming for short bursts of time, naturally, and then take naps and stuff. You know, I'll have a short burst of energy uh, for three or four hours, and then I'll need to nap for a couple of hours. And then I'll have another burst of energy, and, you know, NPs actually need quite a bit of sleep. We asked him to get the butter with the instructions. It is where the butter always is. He came back and says, there is no butter. <laughs> Did you look where it always is? Well, where is it always? <laughs> Why didn't you ask that before you went to get it? Well, I figured I'd find it when I got there. Right? <sighs> it's in the butter container. Where's the butter container? It's on the top, that little thing that's got butter on it. We have one of those in the fridge? <laughs> yes, you have one of those in the fridge. It's a butter thing. Okay, well, let me go look again. Well, well, fuck me. Look at this. There's the butter. I had no idea we had that thing in the fridge. Did it go like that? <laughs> That was some good writing right there. I got, you got to see, there's literally nothing on the counter besides the bread box and the butter. <laughs> That's funny, Rebecca. We had a bread box. I had that in a system with the bread box because that's where you butter the bread, not where the butter is. Well, that's true, what he said. Yes. So, where the butter stays is an SI notion. Where the butter is, like, right now in the current stage of process, is an NI notion. Rachel and I had a similar NISI frame bump earlier uh, where I don't remember exactly what it was. Do you remember what it was? No. That's the SI on both of our parts. That's how it's going to be. Men are physically incapable of seeing anything that's not moving where you're hunters. You are, maybe, not me. That doesn't make me a lady. Oh, Although yeah. I am a very that. special lady. But that's not... That doesn't make me a woman. Let's have... Can we, like, talk about... I want to use the tarot cards to... Say yes or no to the dress. 
I think that would be fun. Okay, sure. As long as you acknowledge that the cards might be wrong about it, just like they are about basketball games. Ultimately, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, obviously. But I think, it, can we just do it for fun? Of course. Let's see. Let's see what the tarot has to say about too much fabric. That's the first question. Well, that's the first dress. Too much fabric is the first dress. It's blue. It's, uh, it's half Coco Chanel, half Versace. This is the Klimt Tarot. So this is what I had to say about too much fabric. Too much fabric. You get three cups. Oh. All right. It's the three of cups. Three no, wait, is that two of cups or three of cups? What does it say? Three. Three, three of cups. cups. That's usually the partying card. Well, it's partying cards. So you're going to party fine if you choose the dress with too much fabric. Okay. Maybe it's going to be well air conditioned. True. Maybe you're going to be like, ooh, I'm glad I have so much fabric. Yeah. Now let's see about the dress, the black dress. It's a one cup? Ace of cups. It's the ace of cups. That's love and hope and... New emotion. Yeah. That's so similar. Do That's you so have another dress? Or how about the dress not yet chosen? This is the dress not yet chosen. Or it just popped out. So what is Ooh. it? You know what it King is? of Wands. King of Wands. So I would suggest that either your first two choices are your emotional choices, and your last choice there would be a pragmatic decision to go with something that's dictated by others and the situation rather than your taste or choice. That doesn't necessarily make it worse. It's the king. So I think I think they're all good outcomes, though, right? There's, yeah. not a, there's no bad cards here. No. It's either party time or a brand new love called love of self. Or... They're all good cards, you're King, right. King of Wands, which, look, look at all the eyeballs on the King of Wands there. That's a lot of eyeballs. Everybody's eyeballs. But maybe I don't, but see, that's the thing. I don't want the eyeballs on me. You don't want the eyeballs Because it's you. a wedding. Right, the eyeballs are supposed to be on the bride. Yeah, and I don't want to be the eyeball. I'm thinking, I'm leaning. I see, this is such a nice card, too. Like, this, I always think of first love and, like, this is a black dress. I think you you really like the black dress, yeah. but we just need to clarify. You know, let's okay. see what let's All see right. what the clarification is going to to say. Let's see what the clarification says. Okay, the clarification is what you're going to find from Aunt Leslie or your mom regarding what the bridesmaid's dress actually yeah. looked yeah. like. So this is the basic question: is if you wear the black dress, what will be the outcome regarding the bridesmaid's question? Ooh, ten of swords. Ten of swords. That's not a good card. No. That one, I think it means you're trapped. You look like a bridesmaid. Damn. You knew you shouldn't have worn this. Damn it. It's not happening. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. I think that is a clarifier right there. <laughs> okay. Well, remember, Rachel, we can ask I, the tarot again in a couple of days. And if, we should also find out what. That just says what the clarification is going to say. It could be wrong with clarification. True. Um, true. Such a specific meaning to that card. Yeah, very specific meaning. It's known to be the bridesmaids. Your dress looks like a bridesmaid's dress card. That's what it's oh my called. Gosh. Oh my god. I would hate that. Especially like, I'd be like, no, this is my boyfriend. Rebecca's with you, uh, Rachel. The, that 10 out of that. Ten of swords might be a deal killer for bad. the black dress. Yeah, yeah. Ace of cups doesn't necessarily mean good emotions. Could be a new bad emotion. No, good point there, okay. Rebecca. Okay. This means a lot of. Emotions. So, what do you guys think about three of cups then? Kyra asked me to take it down. 
Three cups is party. It means it's appropriate to this to the situation. Okay, all right. All right, Carissa G, here you go. Card for you. We'll do a three pull for you, okay? We'll do a uh yeah, three pull. We'll do a a a beast a beast human divine. Your animal self. Oh, you got the same card. Your animal self feels trapped right now. It feels trapped like a trapped animal with your body. Maybe you're working too hard. Maybe you sweat too much today and you're dehydrated. Maybe you need to sleep. Maybe you need to eat. Maybe you've got too busy, a hectic schedule. Maybe your schedule is not hectic enough. Now, your human, your mind self. This is the. What is this one? Uh, my eyes are something good for small stuff. Is XX. XX, that's 20. What is 20? Judgment. Judgment. So, your human self. Is judging. I guess I would say, uh, you know, you know what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what's good and bad. Yeah, you can make decisions right on the spot. You know whether to tap dance or shove that foot over someone's butt. Now let's talk about that element of you, which is divine. So some tennis swords. You wore the wrong dress. It looked like a prosthetic. Epi. It is an epi blunder. Oh. Part of you that's divine is the Eight of Wands. Sometimes called Eight of Sticks. Um, I don't remember what this card means. Usually it means fast movement, but I could read the meaning from this card. Sure, if you want okay, to. Okay, yeah. So Eight of Wands means... So to my motion, activity, dynam dynamism, dynamism, you blending of activities. You're divinely dynamic. How about you, uh, Rebecca Vitsum? You seem like a uh, terror person. Let's switch decks. Let's switch decks. We got a few different okay. decks. This yeah, one's we called have a bunch of decks. the Clipped Tarot. But I'll get out my tarot deck. I have one. We use sometimes. But I'm, yeah, we use a lot. I'm more familiar with this one than that one. That one's kind of confusing because all the cards are shiny, so it's kind of hard to tell them apart from each other. Mm. All right. So this is this is a, an assessment of yourself, your animal self, your human self. And your divine self. Okay. Yes, these are tarot cards. Your animal self is found in your family. Yes, your family, the five of cups. Six. Six of cups, I mean. Sorry. Family. It's all right. That's where your animal self is found. Now, your human self. Your human self, six of sticks, six of wands, sometimes called. This is the, I believe, the victory card? Yes, it is. Your human self's all about that victory. You lose, loser. That's Rebecca standing over her vanquished foe. Um, now, <coughs> hi, Rebecca. Cups, guys. Not gonna lie. Boo! Too much fabric. I think too much fabric is gonna work out for you. Yeah, I think too much fabric is gonna work out for me. It's gonna be too just, cold in there, and you're gonna be like, it's just enough fabric. Right? Oh, there you go. This is your last one. You, the divine part of you. I tend to interpret this card as the tarot deck refusing to answer, as saying it's you the figure wheel it out. Of fortune. Other people interpret it differently. That's yes. how I tend to interpret this. Is the tarot says. Sorry, I'm not giving you any information about that. It's a crapshoot. Or that you figure sense. it out. Or I'm just telling you, basically, random. Like the, the eight ball says, uh, answer unclear. Ask again. You know, that's how I tend to in, incorporate or interpret this card. I asked an eight ball when we were in the shop if we were going to last, and it said no, and I'm ignoring it. <laughs> 
Why do you ask this? Why, why would you ask that? Then? You could just ask me. Aww. That's N-I over S-I, right? She's ignoring all of her actual experiences and worrying about what a magic eight ball says so sorry. about her relationship. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think we're gonna be cold too. Yeah, I probably will be cold. I She's should. Kind of should so. Um. Let's see. Uh, Thank you. How about you, Wandering Spirit? Okay. Do you want one of these two? Did I do? I did. Carissa? Was that the first person I yeah, did? Let's do one for Wandering Spirit. Did, Carissa, yeah. I did Carissa, and then I did. I reckon I would do Wandering Spirit. All right. Let's find out if your name is accurate. If, in fact, your spirit self is wandering. We'll find out with the cards. First, we're going to do your animal self. The part of you that growls and roars, that mews and meows. Oh, you got the door card. I'm going to take that one out this time. Okay. Now, I typically like to interpret that as the, that means your animal self is the door to something, but this is not actually a tarot card. Okay, This is just extra card that came with the deck. intuition, you like to use that one as. Yeah, this is. It's an extra card that came with the deck. So I put that aside there and we'll still do your animal self. Your animal self is the fool. You fool! Your animal self is a fool. It's just wandering around, just kicking dirt for no reason. Now, your human self, King of Wands. As a person, as a human being, you like to scold others for their wrongdoings. Is that the King of Wands? I don't think it's actually the King of Wands. Uh, yes, they can. You can. He's known to have a fiery temper. Fiery temper. Now your divine self is the King, king of, of Cups. cups. So you're a very emotionally mature person, Wondering Spirit. You're emotionally as mature as the king of emotion. How does it feel to be the king of emotion? And the king of... Man, yeah. It does help taking a drink after. I do, uh, full disclosure, I do have acute ac uh, acne, acute uh, asthma. I've had it since I was a kid. I used to have an inhaler. I should probably have <coughs> one now. We do have an inhaler, Rich. <coughs> oh, that was my too, but mine, well, they were blunt. They said it was ugly asthma. I, I don't have acute asthma. I've got an ugly one. <laughs> I find the weed helps in general. King Probs just wants to vibe without ignorance. <laughs> who are the ignorance? The people who have no emotion? FI polar people? Just get out of here, FI polar people. You people are ignorant. Sure, wandering spirit, no problem. Um... I agree that the fool is not a bad card. And in fact, Rachel Long said that she identifies as one, you know, she identifies herself partially represented by the fool card. Yeah. She's always found it to be. Yeah, the number zero resonates a lot. In life. Like, one time. <coughs> <coughs> Um, this time during, uh, a time when me and my friends were playing laser tag, I got a perfect zero, which had never happened at the place before. They were like, for the first time ever, someone gets a perfect zero. 
So I didn't get shot, and I shot no one. <laughs> you know what? Um, Sixty-nine Cuba. I actually generally try to stick to a rule where I don't try to use tarot cards to predict the future. Mrs. Mom, that's so interesting. My Dark Moon Lilith is also an Aries. So I use it to describe how people. I could do anti advice. Sort of describe three anti advice cards. Yeah. Like, don't do this, don't do this, and yeah. don't do this for you, Carissa? Yeah. There you go. You pull them. <laughs> three anti advice for Carissa G. First of all, whatever you do, don't be. They came out naturally. I'm going to take them. Okay. First of all, you no, know, like Deadpool. First of all, no Ace of Swords, no new thoughts. You just yep. stick to the old stick, thoughts. Yeah, stick to the old thoughts that you've had. No new ideas. They're not going to work. Yeah. So you're going to think, oh, I have a great idea. No, you don't. That's what the cards are saying. You don't. Yeah. Next That's one. Advice number two. Don't Let's rely see. on the community for anything. Yeah, don't. Don't rely You're on any new thoughts and no community. Keep to yourself. Keep your items to yourself. You're going to think, I'm a giver. I like to give. No. Do you're not give steal your all items. your coins. Yeah. If you do that. Yeah, exactly. Keep your money to yourself. Do not give. What other, what other anti advice? Also, don't regret. Don't spend your time lost in regret over the cups you left behind you. Instead, look forward to the blessed lights of new cups that come behind the clouds in the future of Arenas. This guy, this guy's looking up. He's not looking at the other cups behind him. He's over them, over <laughs> those cups, over those feelings. The sky towards the castle is bright. Follow that. Stick with that. You'll Head be towards fine. the bright sky castle in your heart. That's okay? the anti advice for you. No new ideas, though. Definitely. No, none of your own ideas. new ideas. My new ideas, Rachel's new ideas, those are fine. Yeah, you get new ideas from other people, but actually, I think those will fail probably too. I'm not gonna lie. Doomed to doomed to endless failure. Stick to the old ideas. <laughs> That's what you have to ask for anti advice cards, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, hoard other cups. Those cups that you had over there, you know, those eight or seven other cups you had, they're over with. You're done with them. There's at least Move three on. other cups available. You can get up to 10 cups. Yeah. So, you know. Go towards the 10 cups. Go Don't. to a couple of cups that you haven't gotten yet. Forget about those. The other two cups. Uh, add two more cups plus three pentacles, a couple of wands, maybe four or five swords, not one. These four or five. Then you got yourself something that you can really build on. What's his mom? A pile of different things. Yeah. Hey, Gamma Quadra. Hey, girl. Florida. Florida would be like the sun card or something like that. Or like the. You're going to sign up each of the 50 states for the cards. <laughs> Alaska. New Hampshire would be like, you know, it's a. Four so, cups. Four sticks or something. <laughs> four sticks. And what are the four sticks? What is the four A lot sticks? of people like to get married in Vermont. Oh, really? Yeah. I sound innocent and childlike, but you know what? I want to point something out, Rebecca, that people a lot of times this don't think about. interpretation. You got to look at that picture. There's a little baby <laughs> riding a horse <laughs> in the blazing sun. I don't see one lick a sunscreen on that baby. And the fact is, that's not a safe place to put your newborn infant. 
Uh, you say you have kids. How many of them did you put naked atop, bareback atop a horse in their infancy? How many? I hope the answer is zero. And if you add in there, if you add in there the hot sun, I bet the answer is zero still. Yeah. So I want to point out that for me, the sun card is cautionary. Watch out. Don't get too self-involved here or you'll get sunburn of ontological here, excess. It's one of his personal cards, and I want to link the, the um, personal card site to them. Okay. And then scroll down your person to the tarot research to your personal cards. Yeah. Close. So that's what I want to. Here you go. Face to face. Here's a link to that thing. You can go over there and link it for fair. Here you go now. You can go there and try it and find out your personal card. It's pretty cool. Together, making it yum, yum, yum. You know what? We both both have <laughs> naked people in our personal cards. So my personal cards are the High Priestess and Judgment. And judgment has a little baby and... But you know, like half the cards in Tarot deck have naked babies on them. I mean, the well, original, there's a lot of flying show. naked babies, aren't there? In your deck, but oh, not just in my original. deck. Yeah. Entire, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarettes, bam, <laughs> boom. Somebody's operating on all cylinders here. You ask the important question: Can I leave <laughs> my child on a horse with the windows rolled down? <laughs> <laughs> Not if it's in the hot sun. It's still not okay. Oh. And the baby looks like he's having a lot of fun, right? Yeah. It but does is that really is that really a happy expression on his face, or is it one of abject terror? <laughs> uh, the horse hurls down a, a rocky terrain at breakneck speed in the blazing sun. That's a uh, pretty scary. Yeah. It's pretty irresponsible parenting. I think those who watch Teletubbies are bound to think of the sun as childlike. It's a good point there, Wandering Spirit. Because in Teletubbies, the sun was a baby. It was a baby's face. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so odd. <laughs> Kids don't become dumb until after they fall off the horse, Rebecca. That's why they don't realize it until afterwards. <clears throat> um, I tend to spend a lot of time in the corner scared why I can't say I can't say it's just fear in general well I mean we were talking about that earlier that Rachel and I I think both create generate things to be fretful about because we don't really have a lot of stuff to genuinely be fretful about but I don't think you know, it's like, we're not going to really completely feel at ease uh, until in the, living in this, in this uh, situation is, I think, a good thing. I think it's a necessary thing. I think it's increasingly a good and necessary thing for my dad to have us here. My dad's increasingly... Um, I think glad and grateful to have us here, uh, but it's it's at the same time. It's definitely you know I'm I'm living at my I'm living with my dad under his roof, and it's it's not it's not my natural state of being, obviously. 
I it's just I, until less than two years ago, I hadn't lived with my parents for you know thirty years or something. So, uh, maybe twenty five. Anyway, it's obviously when I first came back, it was a lot. It was a lot more complicated because there was my mom. She had dementia. I was helping my dad take care of her. And he was, it was complicated because he didn't really want to be, uh, um, I mean, um, as far as I can tell, Lake Shore has really not any problems with it, by and large. But, I mean, there are isolated incidents, this incidents, but I think you've been you've been wrong about that, actually. So far, as far as I, I can tell, um, the general narrative seems to be that it's working fine. You know? What's the latest news that you, you think proves you right? Because so far, I haven't seen anything. A couple isolated instances, right? They're the, the they're no more common than equivalents with other vaccines. So the important thing is to remember, Lee Tremor, to be correct, not to pick the correct team. You made the mistake of picking of picking a team rather than be trying to be correct. Yeah, it's difficult for all of us when people pick teams and say try to be correct. Wandering spirit. Oh wait, you're talking about my mother having dementia. I find that much less difficult than people being wrong. And what percentage of recipients are Report are experiencing these complications. Make tremor. The thing is, you may yet be proven right as more things become revealed. You it won't prove me wrong because I acknowledge certainly that that might be the case and have all along. But heretofore, you've shown a persistent insistence on making claims prematurely about it. So, I see you proved wrong again, not right again. I mean, if all you do all day is look up articles explaining what possibly could link to why the vaccine's going wrong, you're going to be inundated with a bunch of data that's going to suggest to you a pattern that doesn't exist. You're not proving me wrong at all. It's not about me, Leaf Turner. You're making, you've been making claims all this, this whole time about the vaccine. Um, various wild ones and various not wild ones, you know? Is Callie making you guys get a vaccine passport? No, that's not, not that I know of. Mm -mm. Where are they doing that, Sheila W? The thing is, I've been very cautious in my claim making about things across the board from the get-go. So I made some very strong claims early on, but they were cautiously phrased and therefore correct. It's a matter of, you know... It's a matter of being careful about not making excessive claims. Well, we have to reference only your previous statements around here. Um, I think that okay, well, I never okay, fine. Well, I mean, we have no way of knowing that's what you're referencing. Is COVID around for good or is it kind of winding down? 
I suspect it'll be winding down because you can read the you can read the energy in the country or in the world and in the narrative, right? So the thing to remember is this. COVID's a a novel strain of the common cold. And it's one that has um, a slightly higher risk than the common cold of causing death. Slightly higher. Very slightly. In other words, the common cold is just as likely to kill the people that it killed as is coronavirus, as is the uh, you know, COVID virus. So um, that's reality. Yeah. Is COVID, is there this novel form of the cold going to continue to exist? Yeah. Is it a lot worse than a common cold for some people? Yeah. It is. Was it uniquely contagious and uncontainable yeah and that's part of why right off the bat i pointed out this is stupid a big part of the reason is what the actual reality is and what we want it to be seems to be running afoul of each other and nobody's pointing out this you know um if if in fact it's what you say it is then there's no way we're going to contain it so why would we you know why would we put all this energy in, into destroying a bunch of shit in a futile effort to have containment theater? And the answer was nobody had any answer. Um, but what Sheila says is absolutely correct. <coughs> It'll be like the common cold going forward because people are tired of the scare narratives. <coughs> Not because anything's changed. Now, granted, I suspect the vaccine is working, but the reality is the COVID numbers in the first place were never, yeah, well, and remember Oliver Linehan, CNN and Fauci are now both finally acknowledging the accidental lab release is likely that I made this claim quite a long time ago. What everyone was saying is crazy, only crazy conspiracy theorists are making these claims. So it's not like I'm not willing to make the bold claims. Um, they just have to be well substantiated. I do my research first. That's why I'm generally correct. No, it likely is a correct assessment. And I said this when everybody was saying only crazy conspiracy theorists are saying this. Even though I've been right about everything, I wasn't cautious. I didn't choose. Not that it's much beyond needs to be investigated. The preponderance of the evidence, so we don't have a clear, distinct, we, since there's absolutely no alternative, by the way, in other words, unlike every other novel virus, they haven't identified the animal host from which it stemmed. Okay? So we have no conclusive determination, and so we have to make a determination on the preponderance of the evidence, and the preponderance of the evidence has made been very clear from the beginning that this is most likely a lab release. That's in a lab release. Now, I didn't catch on to it right at the very beginning. You said likely isn't a correct assessment. you broke the moratorium of gain on a function research by funding it. <laughs> okay, well, I can only read what you what you did type. <laughs> um, yeah, it is the case. Uh, uh, I think it likely is, but we won't we won't ever know we won't ever know for sure because uh, the Chinese government. But I mean, like, if you look at the the sort of circumstantial case, the preponderance of the evidence is strongly in favor of a lab release because of the way the Chinese government behaves, if for no other reason. And we have ample reason to distrust and disbelieve the Chinese government in all their bullshit that they pull. And so, you know, I like that face, G. What what emoticon is that? Is that chagrined? I've, mm -hmm. I've asked for a chagrin emoticon for a long time now. Is that chagrin? What does chagrin mean? It means embarrassed because you did something dumb. I oh. guess, sort of. I'd say yes, that is chagrin. How is he criminally responsible for it?
Oh, it's not any of those things. Nobody could possibly have predicted this. Nobody could possibly have predicted this insane overreaction of the entire world, this incredible mass hysteria that uh, swept the entire world would be the response to um, some a few World Health Organization people uh, overhyping a, a, a cold thing. You know, it's like, come on. It's like, the thing is this. Um, it makes so much sense. Well, I mean, Fauci, I'm not, I'm not telling you to say anything like, oh, he's the greatest guy in the world or whatever. He's been swept around by the waves of public opinion most of the time. You know, like any idiotic bureaucrat. Yeah, thank you, cigarettes. Hala mother effing lulia. It's negligence of multiple parties plus coronavirus plus th this is the other thing. It's where we were set up narratively. So unfortunately, there was there was this desire to respond better next time something like the misinformation campaign of the Russians during this election, blah, blah, blah. There's all this kind of sh shit set up, right? And then there was all this, you know, there's these scare viruses that have been coming around for a while, this, you know, SARS, you got your, your Ebola, we're worried about this, we need to set up some, some preventative mechanisms, we need to set up organizations to keep an eye on this and make plans and make announcements and shit. And, uh, well, sure enough, they're all itching, you know, they're sitting there waiting to do their, their jobs, to be able to finally go into full effect. Finally, it's the world pandemic we've been waiting for, the World Health Organization, so we can all kick into high gear and, and act important, walk around in biohazard suits and get our pictures on TV. And they, they jump the gun. They're like, well, this might be good enough. Let's hype the shit out of it. And they had no idea when they did, that they had reached a certain tipping point. Prior, they had tried to scare people about a bunch of other viruses, like, sorry, 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 everybody freaked the fuck out. And nobody freaked the fuck out. And so they're used to always having to hype shit all the maximal to get as much freak out as they can because they think everybody's freaking out too little in the first place. You don't get it. You don't get it. You know, bird flu, pig flu, swine flu, avian flu. You know, it's like, okay, enough. Yeah, we get it. People get diseases. Diseases spread, people die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. SARS was way worse, but it wasn't nearly as contagious because of the um, the various factors like incubation time and lethality as well. So any disease that kills most of its hosts, if it doesn't have a very, very long incubation time, is going to run out of hosts very quickly, right? And it's not going to last very long as a disease. Yeah, a lot of people in every field assume their field is far more important than it actually is. Yeah, when when you are a professional dancer, it's professional dancers who who keep the world together through their passionate performances and they are the key glue to society's soul and stuff, you know. And uh, but Well, I mean, utilitarianism would try to make that claim, but of course, what Winston's mom says is utilitarianism would say that an action is right if it results in the happiness of the greatest number of people in a society group. Here's a fundamental problem with utilitarianism is it presents itself as a normative framework, but it's not, which is to say a, a proper normative framework tells you ahead of time definitively whether a prospective action is going to be moral or immoral. You don't have to 
check on the results later to find out if you were moral or immoral. In other words, wickedness and immoral permissibility aren't that broadly defined. Yeah. Utilitarianism? More like futilitarianism. Boom! All right, and boom! That's a two-gunner right there, Oliver Langhand. It's a four-gunner now. You got a four-gun salute for that. With my boner, it makes five. Hmm. I'm just kidding. I don't really have a boner. Uh, they just pull structural and institutional st strings. They don't necessarily control our behavior, but it limits and guides us. Certain traits are being selected for. Oh, Carissa G., you cry. You cry if you think that COVID has something to do with with a, a dominant el elite cadre <coughs> of cabals of villainous billionaires. Meow and the meows. Well, then all I can say is, hey, that bucket of meow you got there has got too much meow for my pure. Mm, I like that. There. You're a handsome man. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. You know, speaking about make everyone look, I really want to share with you Aoki's very powerful boxing move that he uses in How Jimmy Ogi Pope. So he's boxing. He's boxing, right? And he's having trouble with this tough opponent. Then he pulls out his secret move. And then the other boxer looks over there and he goes, Pow! <laughs> It's like you, it, they have all this build up to Aoki's new big secret move. And it turned out it was just the, Oh my God, what's that move? You know, like, Oh my God, what's over there? <sighs> <laughs> Hopefully he'll be dead by then, 69 Kuda. Um it was so funny. I, I I enjoyed that episode so much. <laughs> so yeah, if I uh, if I can get in a in a boxing match with C.S. Joseph, I'm gonna try Aoki's move, and then Metal Ground is gonna be like, and then when I turn back, he will be looking over there, and then pow, right in the right in the kisser, right in the kisser, right there. That's the kisser. First to your mouth. It's because, you see, when you punch someone in a boxing match, you have special you have special words for various parts of your face. You've got the kisser, you've got the smeller, you got the seers and the hearers. You've got the uh, teeth holders, that's the jaw. And you got the uh, bone to bone skin flaps. <laughs> Those are the places you get punched for, you get punched at in boxing. Um, okay, we're pushing two hours. That seems to be, in general, approximately enough. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I probably will play. Some guitar before I go. Uh, Rachel and I spent. Oh, that's one of the interesting things we did that I forgot. I forgot about that. Can you join the Moxie Match, C.S. Joseph? You can be his cut man. Would you like that? Rachel and I saw a license plate that said BJ Loves. 
PJ loves. I mean, obviously, it begs the question, BJ loves what? Or it provokes the question, I should say. But beyond that, it makes you think, maybe he just sent a BJ love, you know? Plural. Who destroy both of us? You're 6'4". I'm also 6'4". You're Jack's AF. Well, I'm Jack's A-something. You've been trained by military people? My dad was in the military. You have the mental power of Tony Robbins. I have the mental power of Eric Strauss. And you have self-growth. I am fully grown, so that gives me an advantage since you're still growing. Bye, for Rebecca. See you later. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. <laughs> Logan Paul or Mayweather. <laughs> Mayweather. <laughs> oh, that's a funny question, Lee Trevor. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious to see Logan Paul fight Mayweather. That would be so funny. Mayweather was just tearing into teeny shreds. Even, even nowadays, old Mayweather was still tearing into teeny shreds. You know, he, or put him in front of the Tartan Tornado. Did anybody here watch the boxing match the other night? It had uh, three matches. Uh, it was two, two matches on the undercard and one one title fight between the Tartan Tornado and uh, and. Um, and this guy, Ramirez, this guy from Fresno, who who had on all of his boxing outfit, he said, uh, wonderful pistachios, <laughs> which I thought was funny. <laughs> At first, they showed him just sort of warming up in his, in his shadow boxing in his training room, and he just had the shirt on. Uh, I was like, I wonder if he just really likes pistachios? <laughs> no, he was obviously sponsored by pistachios. Once he, he came out there, he was covered with pistachio Brandon. Anyway, um, no, they are not. No, they are not. Logan Paul and Mayweather are actually fighting each other? You've got to be fucking kidding me. Are they really? Mayweather took that fight? Why in the world would Mayweather take that fight? Oh, Oh my god. That is ridiculous. Pay per view on Fanmio? Oh, come on. Who's going to pay per view for that? Maybe me. I want to see it. <laughs> Well, Logan Paul fought a couple of YouTubers already and won. I guess he figures he's ready for Mayweather now. Yeah, th there's another point. Isn't Mayweather like a, a lightweight or something? No, Logan Paul is the poster child of an ESTP. Jake Paul is the poster child of an ESFP. Jake Paul is the SFP in that in that brother pair. Both parties are getting hella dollars regardless of the outcome. That's why Mayweather took it. That's why Logan took it as well. But you know. Yeah, Logan Paul's ESTP. Jake Paul is ESFP. I, you know, I saw a snippet of that video. I didn't realize that was Mayweather, though. Uh, they were, they, I showed a snippet of that video when talking about how trashy boxing's become and in sort of scoldy fashion on the ESPN broadcast the other night. But the fact is, it actually pumped up interest in boxing quite a bit. It got me reinterested in boxing in part. Part of why I got, why I got reinterested in boxing was I started watching one of the first you know, fights I started watched, I watched in the last like 
year that got me started watching boxing shit again was one of those Paul fights. I don't remember which one it was. No, he doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> of course not. I don't care that Mayweather's old and that Logan Paul's bigger. Mayweather is going to to I mean Mayweather's a genuine professional, excellent professional boxer. Like he's got the sweet sound science down, you know. Logan Paul is is just uh Well, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that um, boxing is getting trounced by MMA. I think boxing was getting trounced by MMA. But I'll tell you something. Uh, I watch – there's there's new fights coming out with, like, uh, Kamala Alvarez and stuff that I watch on a boxing channel here on YouTube. Um I forget what the boxing channel is called, but it's also got those Paul fights on it. And uh, and I don't watch MMA highlights, and I, and I do watch boxing highlights. And I, I will watch MMA on TV sometimes. Um, I agree with you that it's kicking. It was totally kicking boxing's ass, but I actually think boxing is going to come back too. Um, it's, you know, I agree that the, the scheduling with boxing – is a problem that there aren't enough good fights and there aren't and it doesn't it needs to have like a season you know like mike tyson's coming back to box again <sighs> no he's not is he mike tyson's gonna come box again Well, I will say that that one of the more interesting boxing matches that I've seen was the one where um, that number one guy from MMA came and fought a boxing match and lost, but it was a good fight. I don't remember what it was. Mike Tyson's friends with the Paul brothers. Good night, Carissa G. Right, I agree with you there, Legends Fall. That um, a good MMA fighter has a better shot at switching over to Conor McGregor. That was, yeah, okay, a better chance of switching over to boxing than a good boxer does of switching over to MMA. But you know, the fact is, I don't really have any any evidence for that. Uh, probably a lot of people get an MMA maybe start at boxing and uh, and switch to MMA. It's hard to say. I don't really know. I know a lot of people in MMA started wrestling. I guess that's part of the natural place to start for MMA. Um, but I'm not sure. I think maybe more now people start MMA doing MMA rather than doing wrestling or boxing. Is it for the money? You know, I, I don't know. I, I can't explain exactly why I uh, why I like so-called blood sports. But I do. But one of the things I don't like about MMA and that I can't really watch and it makes me feel uncomfortable. In MMA, you got that shit where the guy's out and he's like knocked out, falling down like this, like touchdown style where his arms are stiff like this. And uh, and the guy jumps on him and pounds him two more times before the ref gets in there. I don't like that. That bothers me. Um, once he's out, that he shouldn't get hit again, you know? So that's one reason I don't love MMA is I'm always a little worried it's going to get too brutal for me and I'm going to not want to see what I'm seeing, you know? Boxing tends to... 
the I mean, I believe it, like, as far as because obviously MMA has a much broader skill set than boxing does. Broaden skill sets, broaden skill sets. Sing a full moon song. Okay. I'll sing a moon song. I'm going to sing. Moon River. Perhaps you're familiar with it. I just know the beginning part. Sorry. <laughs> I just have to be okay with that. <laughs> Line did today was we practiced some songs. We didn't practice that one. We practiced three songs that we're gonna sing together. I think she might have gone to bed. I, I don't know if she sort of disappeared, so she might have gone to bed. But um, we replayed. I'm so sad together. It sounds really good when we get the end part right. It sounds really nice together. Um, we also sang together 
Our God, we weatherman, because I need her help on the chorus, because it gets to parts in the chorus. And we sang What's the Matter with Chad. We practiced those songs several times each, and that was good. Sammy has a door that need be told. This is a song for an open road, and such a thing must always do its job. Married up Jeff, turned 19, four years and three kids. We married now in question. Agency, I'll face discretion. Locking in our courts is way too young. Kim Bird is really just a fresh one, making sure those underneath them always run. Doug at 25, bourbon fun, and likewise Doug at 21, and so forth, well up into middle age. But once that seemed to set him free, became his whole identity, now Doug about another friend. Agency out, face expression, locking in our forces. Waiting down, the urgency convert is really just depression. They'll offer you incentive, but they haven't got a thing that's fun. Everybody's panic out with the kids. Lock them up with friends, but that's a dread. Success or produce more unjust terrorists. Agency, our base discretion, locking in our courts is way too young. The urgency convert is really just a pressure, making sure those underneath them all away from Without consent, it's really just a pressure. By parasites surviving on their wages earned by lying while they feed their fear of giant. Yeah, they feed upon the futures of the young. Thanks, darling. She's, she's trying to undress this. She's got the black dress on again. If you've been following, you've been following our dress drama here, she has got the black dress on again now. So, pretty remarkable. Huh? Um, <clears throat> 30,000 days. Too many expectations. Not even worth a damn. Thirty thousand nights to sleep off the intoxication. Otherwise, won't escape the plan. I've wasted half my days trying another's ways. Who can tell me my priorities? Is there anybody? knows the key, cause I'm tired of doing it wrong, I want direction and help all along, wait until I know, or is that just hesitation, where it is no good once your chance is gone, what I need to show, is it so below my station? I'm tired of doing it wrong. I've wasted half my days trying another's ways. Who can tell me my priorities? Is there anybody who knows the key? Cause I think I'm doing this wrong. Yes, I think. I'm doing this wrong Cause I think I'm doing this wrong 
Doing this wrong. When I was younger, it seemed that everything gleamed. I don't know what happened to me, but I've lost that sense of urgency. And I don't think that I'll ever see it again. If you follow my lead, you'll discover I'm louster than you. And you'll want to know the way to get back out to wherever it was you thought you knew. And tomorrow will be just like today, I'll be lost in two. It's a matter of mood as much as a matter of will. And the things I do and the direction I point to still seem a part of me. Good hearted no wonder if I'll ever see them again. I didn't play that song particularly well. Play a little fast. Had some various problems with it. Um. I'm going to play three more. I'll play the three that very saw my parents today, even though she's not here to sing them with me. That's fine. I'm not really ready yet, anyway. We need to practice some more. What's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he very like Dan, who's a terrible man? Is he sort of like Jill, who can't pay a bill? Or rather like Jack, too stuck on the facts? What's the matter with Sue? Will she know what to do? Will she show ingenuity? She talks about you. Whenever we go walking, what's the matter with Brim? She's been living in sin. She's been hanging with Jim. He's looking terribly thin. What's the deal with Frank? Dealing fish from my tank. He's colluding with you, and they're talking to Lou. What's wrong with the ladies? What's the matter with men? I'm feeling the Just focus on Bert. He's medium hurt. What's the quantity for Liz? She failed a quiz. What's the matter with Drew? Will she know what to do? If they bring attitude, will she show ingenuity? She talks about you whenever we go on. Has it lead to lesser days? Overwatered past, and two rivers left that's still okay. Just tie the sails to the mast. Cause each of us has much and gravely sent. Throw up the hands, stiffen the chin. Catastrophe looms heavy overhead again. Time's gone, will. Never be again. <laughs> that was pretty good.
I said I was gonna play three more. I lied. I was gonna play, I'm gonna play four more. I'll play this one. El Nino, my ass. You call the storms. Where is my rank? No drizzle don't count. I drizzle more when the PN sank. Cause it's just the right height to catch all of the undesired splatter. And when I'm done, I'll go outside and climb a ladder. I will go up there and take me a bucket and pour water inside. And I'll say, hey, Mr. Cloud, drop it from the bottom. Hey, Mr. Cloud, won't you drop it from the bottom? Hey, Mr. Cloud, drop it from the bottom on me. <clears throat> You're living on a time frame I will never know Alienation and humanity's soul Imagine you a future after the collapse Returning to the urgency of isolated past You're picturing community free of metaphysics Haunting buffalo while you're picking red delicious Knowledge of the seasons, wisdoms of old Fires blazing in the night to keep away the cold Hostility is kept at bay About what you think is in the way Good life as children of the land With man a copy of the man Imagining a history that never could have been You lecture it to college, advancement is a sin Lamenting disconnection and every corporate act Asserting all your feelings and ignoring all the facts Hostility is kept back Hostility is kept back By what you think is By what you think is in the way Of life as children of the land with that godly weatherman You find me during the teacher's so by now Wish you had lived born in me time but now And your big TV won't run afoul Of exceptions you might allow You visualize nobility sipping on some pork Tribes of peaceful savages and beautiful comport. But few of history's people ever thusly did cavort. Cause life was solitary, nasty, brutish, poor, and short. Hostility is kept to bay. Hostility is kept to bay. By what you think is in the way. What you think is in the way of life as children of the land. With any copy of Weatherman With any copy of Weatherman Okay, I got one more song And that's it Just brooding here won't do any good But brooding's more and more my style I seek the cheery ways of standing where we stood Cause I've been stuck here a while That's despite a natural selfishness That makes it easy to have fun But flutters in the gut become a fist As all my visions come undone I tried to stream distracting in the afternoon where but happy new reality bear down on every day and for a bit I am out of it. Reason still unsaid till I need get out.
out of me. What is inside my head? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It seems like everybody's so sensitive. I'm ready to just get mad. I see the civil ways of living like a kid. Cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to wail and how to do the golden calf. I tried to stream distracting during the afternoon day, but heavy new reality bear down on every day and for a bit I am out of it. For reasons still unsaid. Still I need get out of me. What is inside my head? And still I'm sad. So sad for me, sad for her, unhappily, and what you call sorrow, I call home, blues that think clear down to the bone, down to the bone, till I'm sad, so sad for me, sad for her, unhappily, unhappily, you call sorrow, I call home. Blues that sink clear down to the bone. And that's going to do it for tonight's live stream. Song singing extravaganza. I hope you enjoyed participating in it as much as I did. Thank you so much for being here.